Hello, my name is Edwin Rutsch and I'm the director of the Empathy Center located here in beautiful Santa Barbara, California. The center's mission is to build the empathy movement and to raise the level of empathy in society through education and community building initiatives. And my name is Anita Novak. I teach at McGill University and I'm the author of Purposeful Empathy, a book that invites readers to turn up the volume of empathy in their lives. And at the beginning of 2024, Anita and I co-hosted the Empathy Summit uh, brought to you by the Empathy Center and more than 40 authors of books about empathy participated. They shared what their book was about, why they were motivated to write it, and what they hope readers will take away. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you'll buy their book. Maria, I'm so excited to introduce Maria, who is an empathy advocate who shows progressive people-centric organizations and leaders how to achieve radical success through empathy. She is a sought after speaker and facilitator and the author of The Empathy Edge, Harnessing the Value of Compassion as an Engine for Success. She's gifting 50 audiobooks to the summit. Welcome and over to you, Maria. Thank you so much, Anita. Um, can everyone see my slides? Yes. Okay, great. I'm going to start my little slideshow here. Um, I won't be able to see you while my slideshow is playing, but um, thank you for that great introduction. As Anita mentioned, I am an author, a speaker, a leadership trainer, and really what I like to call myself an empathy advocate. Um, I'm the founder of Red Slice, which I've spent decades helping forward-thinking leaders and brands embrace empathy for radical success. And that's really how I came at this work was through marketing and branding and having an understanding of the importance of connecting and engaging with people on a human level and trying to teach my clients that as well. Um, my next book actually is coming out this fall, The Empathy Dilemma, which is about how to help successful leaders balance performance, people, and personal boundaries. And side note, I want to include all of your books in the reading list in the back of that book. We're still in the copy edit right now. So I will be reaching out to make sure that uh, we get your book included in there. Pretty much the, the mantra that sums up how I come at this work is that cash flow, creativity, and compassion are not mutually exclusive. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the both and philosophy that I'm trying to push forth into the world that for too long, we've subscribed to these either or um, false narratives that have held us back from or an organizational perspective, but also from a human perspective and from an innovation perspective. Let me tell you why I wrote this book. Some people go, how does a brand strategist end up becoming an empathy advocate? There's a variety of reasons. One, as I mentioned, is that you know, in my work, I really discovered the superpower of empathy and understanding what makes people tick, where they're coming from, their context. And that can be used for good or that could be used for evil. And I really encourage my clients to use that for good, for how can you improve lives? How can you add value? How can you speak the language of the person that you're talking to? And realizing what a vital skill that is when we're dealing with colleagues, when we're dealing with our children, when we're dealing with our partners. But the biggest reason I wrote the book is this guy right here. Um, this was taken several years ago. My son is nine years old now, but about 2016, when I was having these epiphanies about wanting to do a little bit more meaningful work and seeing and unlocking the secret of empathy in, in terms of engaging and connecting with people, my son was two and a half at the time. And I was reading him books about compassion and sharing and empathy but when I looked up at the headlines, right, politically, organizationally, in business, in media, the examples of the leaders and their behaviors that I saw, quite frankly, frightened me for my son. And I thought, what is the point of teaching him all this if this is the world he's going into, if these are his role models? And being the stubborn, redheaded Italian that I am, I couldn't let that stand. So I decided to approach it from a research perspective and say there had to be leaders, organizations, brands who were practicing empathy and winning. And I was delighted to find tons of research, data, case studies, interviewed several people and spent three years really digging into the research and the case studies and the data. And 
built a business case for why empathy is not just good for society, it's actually great for business. Now, we all, when we look at the world, you know, Rob mentioned this in the studies that he cited, I talk about it in the studies that I cite in the book. There's so many disconnections in our world. There's so many places where we have conflict now more than ever, right? But there's racism, misogyny, war, bias, prejudice. That's at a macro level. But then when we look at our everyday level, especially those of us in organizations, whether it's for-profit or nonprofit, there's dysfunctional work teams, there's communication misunderstandings, there's late projects, there's angry customers. All of these issues that we face on a macro and a micro level, I believe the root of that is a lack of empathy. And that unwillingness to see things from another person's point of view costs us dearly because we remain paralyzed, we repeat the same mistakes, and we don't connect and engage. Ultimately, we degrade our brand reputation, our team's productivity, our client or customer experience, as was mentioned earlier, and our organization's bottom line performance. You've heard many statistics today about the cost of disengagement, the cost of a lack of productivity. So my whole work and the point of this book and the point of my next book is that both and thinking is what our world requires right now. We, again, have to get rid of this false narrative that we can only be empathetic or ambitious, compassionate or competitive, and empathetic or high performing. We are smart enough and bold enough to embrace both of those things to be true at the same time. And I have a picture of a smoothie here because this is my new favorite breakfast smoothie, and it is nutritious and delicious. It is really good for you. It has everything you need to start your day off right. It's got your, your good fats, your carbohydrates, your proteins, and it's delicious. My nine-year-old asks me to make this for him as a treat. So we can embrace both and thinking. Balancing organizational performance and creating a thriving workplace culture that humanizes people doesn't require them to leave their humanity at the door is entirely possible. And really the pandemic just accelerated that trend. It was already a movement that was swelling and starting. Many of you have been at the forefront of that. So with the book, The Empathy Edge, the structure and the takeaways, first of all, I want people to take away that empathy is a strategic leadership, culture, and brand advantage. It is something worth paying attention to. It is something that has bottom line impact. And that empathy is not just good for society, it's great for business. Now, some people, you know, I did a I did a TEDx talk about tricking leaders into being more empathetic. And some people took umbrage with that. You know, how can you make empathy this, this self-serving thing? My philosophy is that once you embrace empathy for whatever reason, you're there. You're in the room with people. You are seeing things from another person's point of view. And that transforms you from the outside in. So if, if I'm trying to be empathetic to the skeptics out there by trying to meet them where they are and saying, come along with me, come try this out, come look at the world through this perspective and engage with people in this way and see how it transforms your life. So the book is divided sort of into three sections. There's a basic intro about what is empathy, some of the research, some of the scientific experiments that have been done around empathy, proving that for barring some outlying psychological disorders, empathy is innate to us as humans, and it is a muscle. And for some of us, unfortunately, it atrophies based on our environment or based on whether it's not modeled or rewarded or it's not safe to show, but it can be strengthened and it can be learned through active choice. So the book is divided into three sections. One, we really need to start empathy at an individual level. What do we do as individuals and as leaders to strengthen our own empathy? Then two, what is the brand or what is the team or the culture around those people in an organization? What are the processes, the policies, the reward structures, the hiring procedures that enable those people's empathy to thrive? And then finally, you can look at things from a market perspective, from a brand and customer experience perspective, because now it's genuine. It's starting from the inside out. So what is the experience you're bringing to your customers? What is it like to do business with you? What is it like to interact with you? If you're a nonprofit, what is it like to be part of your community or be a donor? That experience can then translate from the inside out. 
And I also define empathy at work in my book and in my work as such. Being willing and able to see, understand, and where appropriate, feel another person's perspective. And further, use that information to act compassionately. Compassion is empathy in action. We can be empathetic all we want, but if we don't do anything with the information we're getting from other people, and that doing does thanks, that doing doesn't have to be whatever they want. It doesn't have to be making a different decision. It can just be holding space. It could be listening. It could be doing an empathy circle. So there's different actions we can take in ways that we can respond that are much more productive and much more healthy to connecting and engaging. So real quick, I'm going to speed through this because I got carried away on my little soapbox here, but I want to offer you this quote and a little freebie. freebie. Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, states that, you know, people will try to convince you to keep empathy out of your career. Your humanity will be tested. Don't accept this false premise. And I live by this again, both and not either or. So if you would like to strengthen your own empathy, here's a QR code for you. Just grab your, your phone. It'll ask you a few questions about today's very short presentation. Enter the code habits and you'll get some tips from the book about how to daily or in different interactions, strengthen your own empathy. And for those of you that want to keep in touch, please do. I have a newsletter. I have a great podcast featuring many of the folks that are on this call Thanks, and hopefully Maria. more. Thank you so much, everyone. Beautiful. Thank you.